Hello everyone, I'm Rahul Jado. I'm going to talk about Cube Armor runtime security on AWS Bottle Rocket. AWS Bottle Rocket is a security focused Linux uh, OS distribution. Uh, the primary security pro properties are it ensures reduced attack surface. Uh, it ensures this by making sure that none of the package management tools or maintenance binaries are by default installed on the host. Uh, if anyone has to use these tools, uh, they have to make use of something called as control pod or admin pod to install such kind of tools. The second aspect is ensuring secure updates of the operating system image and root file system. AWS Bottle Rocket leverages the update framework, TUF, which is a CNCF graduated project for secure systems update. The third aspect is how does a AWS Bottle Rocket puts the system in, in a lockdown? It makes use of a kernel feature called as integrity, which ensures that None of the binaries, none of the processes are allowed to write to the kernel memory or none of the existing processes are allowed to load or unload any of the kernel modules. It also makes use of a kernel module feature called as DM Verity uh, or device mapper Verity. It essentially provides integrity verification of the root file system using cryptographic digest. Anyone who tries to write to the sensitive file path of the root file system, uh, ensure uh, you know the node will go into the reboot. The third aspect is it makes use of SLNX in enforcing mode. Uh, so AWS Bottle Rocket uses all these primitives to protect the host. So what is the point of using Cube Armor on Bottle Rocket? Uh, Bottle Rocket protects the host, Cube Armor protects the pods or the applications within the pods. Uh, most of the applications that are installed are installed by a vendor or, uh, or, or someone who is who does not understand security enough. Uh, Cube Armor ensures that the attack surface for such pods or applications is reduced by ensuring that only certain processes are allowed to be forked or exact uh, within the pod. Only certain sensitive file paths or certain network primitives are allowed only by a certain set of processes. In the case of Kubernetes, Kubernetes mounts service account tokens at a predefined mount point within the pod. Uh, Cube Armor helps you protect or secure accesses to these service account tokens. By default, it, you know, if you want only a certain set of processes, a bi one binary or a couple of binaries to only access the service account token, it is possible to enable such kind of access. The same stands true for Kubernetes secrets as well. The third aspect is how do you secure the data within the application? An example would be you have a MySQL database, MySQL database writing all the tables within slash warlib mysql folder, how do you ensure that the writes happening within this folder are done only by a certain set of processes like mysql d or mysql admin? Cube Armor allows you to set policies based on such kind of constraints. So uh, from security point of view, there is the synergy between Bottle Rocket and Cube Armor. Bottle Rocket protects the host or the worker nodes and Cube Armor protects the applications and the pods and all the containers within the pods. What are the kernel primitives uh, that Cubarmer leverages? Uh, you can see here when the user applies a Cubarmer security policy, the Cubarmer daemon set makes, makes use of a primitive called as BPFLSM. It converts this security policy into the BPFLSM bytecode and uses and hooks those bytecodes at the predefined LSM hooks. Uh, LSM hooks have traditionally been used in the Linux kernel since decades, but uh, since kernel version 5.8 and above, these hooks can now be programmed using eBP of bytecode. This is the feature that Cube Armor now uh, leverages uh, from version 0 0.5 and above, which was released just a couple of weeks back. For the observability and visibility, Cube Armor leverages something called as eBPF. Again, it's a well-known technique uh, for observability. Uh, for all the alerts and telemetry, Cube Armor makes use of eBPF. Cube Armor does not depend upon certain old uh, mechanisms such as kernel audit, D, which are which are not by default enabled on most of the security focused operating system images. So it's demo time. Uh, what I have is a EKS cluster uh, with Bottle Rocket as a node image. And this is my demo scenario. Uh, there are three scenarios that I'm going to talk about. Two of them are block scenarios wherein you block accesses to certain uh, behavior. And the third, scenario, third uh, aspect is you enable certain behavior and deny everything else. Typically called as the least permissive policy setting, uh, 
it's one of the tenets of zero trust security and one should ensure that their applications and pods follow this tenet. I'm going to move into the CLI mode now. Uh, so what I have here is the cluster from AWS Bottle Rocket. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to start the alerts and telemetry invocation here. And I have exit into the WordPress application here. You can see here that the WordPress is installed. Uh, WordPress has uh, two, word, uh, two application, two pods. One is the WordPress and another is the MySQL database. Cubearmor is installed as a debug set. And there are certain other services which aids Cubearmor's operation. Uh, I have three policies that I've mentioned before. One is blocking access to the Kubernetes service account token altogether. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the policy. Very simple policy, Kubernetes service account token is mounted at a predefined volume bound point. And any, any access to this particular folder recursively has to be denied. So let's see if I currently try to access the service account token, I'm able to access it. Now, if I try to use the same token as an authorization, as a bearer token, and connect to the Kubernetes API server, I should be able to access it. Here we go. I'm able to access it and I'm able to get the information of the server address. Now, I'm going to apply the policy. So the policy is applied. Cubearmor uh, policy is implemented as a Kubernetes uh, resource. Uh, you can see KSP stand for Cubama security policy in the namespace WordPress MySQL. This is the policy that I've just deployed. Now, if I try to do the access uh, for the token, it should be denied. Here you go, the permission is denied. And you can see the corresponding details here in the alert. Uh, you can see that the enforcer is BPF LSN. Uh, the action is blocked. You can see the policy details. You can see the, the command and the file that was used for the access, as well as other Kubernetes metadata and the pod metadata in the context, uh, including the host name, namespace name, pod names, container details, et cetera. Now I'm going to do the same thing using curl. Uh, internally, it's making use of the same cat command, but you, you should be able to get the permission denied as well as forbidden for the curl. So uh, what, what we have done here is, even though service account token was mounted as part of pod, we have denied access to that particular uh, file and the folder. The second policy is denying execution of certain processes. Now, uh, typically the, uh, the app and apt get are dynamic management tools which should never be used in production environment within any pod. But a lot of Ubuntu and Debian images ship apt and apt get by default. Similarly, even on Alpine, you'll see APK getting by default installed. Ideally, such kind of tools should never be installed in the container image as far as possible. But even if they are installed, they should never be used in the production environment. A lot of times, uh, the developers might want to use such kind of tools in the staging or dev environment for testing, diagnosing, troubleshooting purpose. But uh, the same container image then gets shipped to the production environment where such kind of tools, you use, using such kind of tools increases the attack surface because these could induce new binaries and new files in, in, in within the pod. So right now, if I use apt, apt install, I should be able, I'm, I'm able to do an install. Similarly, if I use apt get, I'm, I'm able to use it. If I, if I apply the policy, So I've now applied the policy. We should be able to see the policy. So you can see this is the new policy that was just applied by me. Now, if I run apt get, it's permission denied. Again, you see the corresponding information here. In this case, this is a process operation, not a file operation. It's execve operation and the binary name and all the other relevant details are popped up here. Similarly, if someone tries uh, apt install, uh, the apt will also be uh, denied the permis per permission in the same way. So what we have seen is two policy which have explicit block based policies, which means that you already know what are the constraints and you want to apply it. But a lot of times an application might, uh, or, a, or a sec system admin or a secure SecOps people might not know exactly 
what are the uh, constraints that needs to be applied so in which case you might know what are the set of binaries that needs to be allowed access for example here i have uh, i'm going to use enable network based primitives for certain processes uh, now these are the processes that are that require access to these network primitives there is a tool which automatically derives this policy it's called as a discovery engine from the cube armor visibility and observability uh, uh, data so now i have a uh, i have a policy here which specifically enables network primitives protocol udp for these set of processes protocol tcp for these set of processes and protocol raw for these set of processes for apache and ping now if i apply uh, currently if i use curl and try to do google.com i should be able to access google.com here i go i'm able to access it now if i apply uh, 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 as well as if i'm able to i should be able to use ping here i go i'm able to use ping so well, i should be able to ping google.com i'm able to ping everything uh, now i apply the policy The policy is now applied, which means that if I do ping, the ping should still work. Uh, if I try to do curl, sorry, not here. It is not allowed to resolve google.com because essentially UDP is not enabled for, for, for curl. So uh, basically what it shows us that even you, you you can only allow specific action and deny everything else. This is the kind of policy which provides you the least permissive policy station. So to summarize, uh, Bottle Rocket protects the Kubernetes host and the worker nodes uh, versus CubeArmor protects the Kubernetes pods and applications by securing the process execution, sensitive file accesses, network primitives that are used and the kernel capabilities. By leveraging both Bottle Rocket and Cube Armor, one can have complete runtime protection for both host as well as the pods.